Welcome back, Dark... Welcome back, 0K fans. Wrong game. I'm not playing Dark Souls right now. I'm playing 0K right now. Because Dark Souls is not done live. I was recording earlier today. I was recording episode 36 today. So I'm a little bit scatterbrained. Anyway. 0K. Welcome back, 0K fans. And Natalie is a Don. I remain your host, Shadow Fury 333 Scatterbrained as ever. And we're going to end off tonight with a match between Hokomoko and Bistrisium on Ravage. And as I was mentioning before, Bistrisium has not played in a while. But they were playing a fair bit before, but they haven't played in a few months. This is the first game, one of the first games they played after a 10-month hiatus, so they're going to be a bit rusty, I'm guessing. But I couldn't find any that were on really good maps that they played more recently. I will do another one on Tuesday. Oh, I should also point out, I'm not going to be here next week. Next week, from Thursday to Monday, I'm going to be in Chicago for a Combo Breaker. So that's the Skullgirls... Well, there's a lot of tournaments, Skullgirls being one of them. And a nice early Blastman coming in from Hokomoko. I mean, Gunship on this map, that's a good choice. I mean, any any factor in this map is a pretty good choice, but Gunship does work well, just given the choke point nature. Anyway, yeah, so that's the fighting game tournament in Chicago, primarily for Skullgirls. But I will also be there for Guilty Gear and... Yeah, mostly skill girls, though. Anyhow, yeah, so I will not be here next week. There'll be no stream next week for 0K or for anything. There's no stream Friday or Saturday. There will be a stream this coming Tuesday and the following Tuesday, but not next Friday or Saturday. I will not be here. Anyhow, looks like Vistrisium, not, I mean, they're set up for Blast Wings. Defenders aren't bad against Rapiers, but not great. Razors are what you want to do against Rapiers. When you, see, when you start seeing rapiers, when you start seeing gunships in general, razors aren't a terrible... Like, having a razor isn't a terrible idea. Having defenders is not a terrible idea either, just because, well, blast wings are a thing. Even having lotus isn't a terrible idea, because a lotus will get you some defense against banshees. But unless you know your opponent's going mass banshees, do not go for a stardust. That's the only time you want to go for a stardust is mass banshees. Single banshee is not that big of a threat. Not enough... Or not single banshee, but like two or three banshees. Lotus will deal with it just fine. Kind of risky, man. This rapier is doing a lot of damage. Actually, not really, no. It's doing a lot of damage, but it's not actually killing anything except for that one metal extractor. And at this point, Vistrisium's bigger problem is more that they don't have that much metal. Hokomoko getting a lot from Overdrive compared to Vistrisium. But Vistrisium looking like they're about to expand. They're not too worried about the one rapier. It's going around the map, dealing some damage. Not too concerned. With a Vandal out, they're definitely not concerned. Okamoko not really building much. In fact, they're starting to, or they're not quite excessing yet, but it's risky. They're getting close. I'm actually kind of surprised. They probably are excessing a little bit. And straight to Amphib. Not going to bother too much with Gunship. I mean, Vistrisium responding to that very quickly and correctly. Getting rid of... The, oh, they got rid of the Rapier too. So yeah, there's not much Hokomoko has for air yet. I wouldn't be surprised if Hokomoko would, in 5-10 minutes time, start rebuilding... Uh, or right now, start rebuilding gunships. Although Crane, always a good choice, especially on this map. This is a map where Crane really becomes powerful. Like, this is where Crane shines. It's a map like this, where it's fairly big, a lot of choke points, not a lot of entrances. The Crane can fly over all that. And this isn't even the best map. The best maps for this sort of thing are things like Lonely Oasis, where you have, or, or not turning in, what is it? La Isla Bonita, where you have a lot of metal extractors that are on hills, or in the water, or this weird combination of things where a single builder would have a hard time getting to it, except the crane. The crane gets to it no problem. Ravage is still a map where the crane has a lot of power, though. But Vistrisium, they don't care. They're just expanding. They have enough firepower. They know that Hokomoko had to do a factory switch. Well, they know now, especially, that Hokomoko did a factory switch, and therefore is 600 metal down as far as army value goes. Now, bear in mind, this is about 600 metal. Like, this army right here, it's not much, granted, but still, if it was all bandits... Maybe about 10 bandits. Okay, a little... Okay, 8 bandits, but still. That'd be a lot of bandits. So right now, Vistrisium I'm fairly confident that they can just build. They can get economy. They need more energy, mind you. But they're fairly confident they can just keep expanding, because they know Hokomoko can't build too much. They had to spend 600 metal on another factory. Actually, 250 on top, or 220 on top of that for the Caretaker, but yeah. 
I mean, Hogamoko is building up more. Vistrishim, unfortunately, due to lack of Caretaker and lack of energy, and surprisingly not building wind generators on the high ground, this is where you want to build wind generators too. This is actually something that's giving Hokomoko a bit of an advantage, because wind gens here, 0 0.8 to 2.5, there is no reason not to build wind generators up here. Granted, Vistrishim knows Hokomoko has gunships up their sleeve, but even then, it's still worth it alongside solar plants to have that extra power to very quickly get that power going. Because Vistrishim has been accessing a quite a bit, and that 600 metal advantage is kind of gone. Like, at this point, Hokomoko has pretty much outproduced over that 600 metal disadvantage they had from building the factory in the first place, because Vistrishim hasn't used up all this metal they have yet. Once this caretaker is done in about 10 seconds, yeah, then it won't be a problem. But until then, it will be a problem. Anyhow, Vistrishim still will be able to defend. As long as Vistrishim can defend their expansion in the center and defend it over to the south, and presumably continue to expand because we have a crane on the field and that is going to be causing lots of problems. Well, at least for Vistrishim. Hokomoko, it's going to be causing a lot of blessings. I mean, Hokomoko loves that. They're very glad they have the crane, I'm sure. But not Vistrishim. Still, Vistrishim needs to defend this and does need to expand a bit more. But if they can defend this, at least it made it worthwhile to have rapidly expanded the way they did. And now they have a caretaker. They do have the energy. They are actually now setting themselves up to be able to build up 20 build power rather than 10. So that should help a bit, but man, this is kind of tricky. The matchup's not as bad as it would be for Cloakie. I mean, the bandits do have a 250. Actually, I don't know. Even then, that's 223, right? 230. Okay. Yeah. So the bandits can survive a single duck volley. At least that's something going for Vistrishim right now. Making shield bots a good choice here. That is one of the reasons why shield is used. One of them is the Amphib matchup. The jump out matchup was the other one, but the Amphib matchup is another big problem because Glaives are 200 health. They die in one shot to ducks. And the ducks don't have to worry about it. Even warriors have a hard time just because warriors can't really deal their damage because of the ducks high alpha in range. Mostly the ducks high alpha. But still, nice harassment coming in here, really nullifying the crane. I mean, the crane's not dead. It's just pulled back a bit. But still, it nullifies the crane by just getting rid of the rapid expansion. Like, yeah, sure, take the expansion. Go for it. I'll just take it off your hands from you. Still, Hokomoko with the economic advantage. Somehow. How? Oh, they also have the center. Okay, I see. They just have overdrive on top of basically having everything Vistrishim has. They're actually slightly behind. But Hokomoko, they're still doing okay. Setting up an attack from the eastern side. Vistrishim well aware of this. Setting up themselves too. Just getting the bandits up. They, they know. They don't want to deal with that too directly. And Hokomoko continuing to expand. Yeah, it's not with cranes, but it's still good. And bandits coming in. This is what I mean. The bandits, they don't melt to ducks the same way glaives do. They can actually take a lot of hits. So the bandits able to rip through the ducks, no problem. And that will... That might be able to turn this whole game around, honestly. I mean, it was... Not turn it around, but solidify for Vistrishium. Not that Vistrishium was at a disadvantage, but this is a huge advantage. I mean, the thing is, even if only a couple bandits survive, that's enough to get rid of the metal extractors. And it looks like that's exactly how many survived, actually, is two. Still more bandits streaming in, as well as more ducks. But a lot of conches. I think Hokomoko is trying to build up for a grizzly. I think they don't have one yet. But I think they're trying to get the build power and economy set up for a grizzly. Because they do have a lot of expanding going on. Like, they took some damage, but there's still a lot more expansion going on. Not where it seems that Vistrishim is aware. Seriously, Vistrishim is not aware of this? Vistrishim is not aware of this. They don't know that what should be their third expansion has been taken by Hokomoko. Luckily for them, Hokomoko has not built any static defenses over here, only building up metal extractors and relying on Vistrishim not seeing it in time in order to make sure that the expansions actually pay off. I'm pretty sure the expansion still paid off, but this should help. We sh I don't know. We're going to see it. We are going to probably see a grizzly fairly soon. For now, those scallops to get rid of the bandits. Good choice, but I think once that starts to go, we'll see Thuglaw fairly soon after. Or sorry, yeah, Thuglaw. And then there'll be a problem. Once again, for Hokomoko. Still, this mass of bandits has got like one swan song left. That's 
Yeah, once the scallop... Okay, that, that's the first scallop. That's the only scallop. Actually, that scallop's gonna get overwhelmed. That will not live. Like, that'll kill two or three of them. Actually, maybe not. No, actually, come to think of it, the shotgun is considerably more effective than, say, a machine gun would be. So yeah, those bandits, they'd have to basically jump it and attack from all sides. As you generally do for Raider versus Riot, that's pretty much the only way Raider versus Riot works. But yeah, unfortunately for Vestrician, they haven't really noticed this area down here. If they did, they'd take it out easily. There's nothing defending it. And that's another six metal that'd be gone that Hokumoka wouldn't have. And Vestrician should take that, honestly. Like, not just get rid of it, but actually capture for themselves. In fact, come to think of it, Vestrician hasn't really taken any metal extractors since the ones in the center are the ones south here. They need these. And these, too. These, oops, these ones over here? They totally need them. The Strishium is falling far behind in metal. They're doing a fine job raiding. But that's not good enough. Raiding's only half the battle. You have to take those metal extractors for yourself. And also the reclaim. But mostly take the metal extractors for yourself. That is what gets you the game. And now, finally, the is going to notice. But why did they didn't take this in the first place is beyond me. No, they aren't going to notice. What the heck, the That This... I don't... No, maybe they don't have the econ view on and they can't tell. It's probably the case. Like, if you don't have economy view on, it may be a little bit hard to tell that down here there are metal extractors, but they should know. I mean, they've taken out these ones. It's really weird. At any rate, they are still raiding very effectively. It's just, like I said, that's only part of what they need to do. Oh, admittedly, that is very effective raids. Mostly against the power infrastructure. I mean, yes, they did get rid of the metal, but there's a lot of reclaim here. But the energy infrastructure was also heavily damaged. That's the important part. But yeah, Vestrisium needs to start rebuilding. They need to have been rebuilding for some time now. Like, what they're doing right now is not enough to actually deal with this. They need to, re they need to be rebuilding. And they need to be capturing this and capturing the western side. Because Hokomoko has been rebuilding very effectively this entire time, and they are going to be capturing this western side of the center as well. So, this is not working out very well at all. Like, Hokomoko, they've rebuilt enough energy, well, they have enough energy going that they aren't totally hooped. They can reclaim now. But yeah, now finally, finally Vestrician realizes this. Actually, are they even paying attention? Okay, there we go. They, I don't think they were paying attention for a little while there. Finally realizes that their lower area should probably belong to them. Unfortunately, their forces are rather busy on the high ground plateau, on the mid-ground plateau, and losing their commander too, that is painful! I think at this point, yeah, I, say, I think the is just gonna throw in the towel. Yeah, they did. Oh, that is painful. Like, really the key problem was that while they expanded really quickly early on and their rating was on point, they didn't take out, they didn't take this metal extractor, or the, mostly on point. The places where it wasn't on point were these were taken from them. And also, they just didn't expand down here to begin with, which is really odd. Nor did they expand here. I mean, I can kind of see if they're rusty, they might not realize it. But at the same time, Hokomoko did expand to the equivalent spots to the east and to the north. So what I thought, Vestrician would have thought, well, what about the spots, the symmetric spots to the south and to the west? Because that's all metal, and you need as much metal as you can get. And that's what kind of what it came down to, is that Hokomoko just had more flexibility as a result... And Vestrician, while they had a really good army setup and they were pushing in good spots and doing a fair amount of damage, they just weren't able to make it count. And yeah, they did excess a fair bit too. That didn't help. Although the excess was fairly early on. And yes, I know that Vestrician is rusty. I mentioned Vestrician is rusty. So I'm kind of curious how they played after knocking some of the rust off. But at the same time, I don't know if that was a matter of rust, like getting distracted and super focused on military and forgetting, oh yeah, right, economy is a huge part of this game. Or if that's how they normally play. I don't actually remember if they have an issue with late game economy construction or reconstruction. Okay, it's not rust. All right. But I don't see a lack of knowledge. Like, okay, so, pro tip, anytime you start a map, actually, not just anytime you start a map, pro tip, settings, Interface, and I think it is under... Actually, no, I don't remember what it is. Start with economy overlay. That is in settings, interface, map. So, yeah. F10 or escape, not sure which. Settings, interface, map. Hit, click that. 
click start with economy overlay that'll have all these metal extractors up right at the start so you know exactly where all the metal and geothermal plants are from the start of the game even on a brand new map granted you do know this stuff when the game is in pre-game but and you know when you start to build metal extractors but it's important to know just in general where are the metal extractors that way you don't get the situation where you forget that there are metal extractors right next to your base and you could be dealing with them or that your opponent might be taking them, or whatever. Anyway, that was that. I mean, like I said, it was really just a matter of damage versus lack of economy. If Vistrusium had built up more of an economy on top of the damage they were dealing, they probably would have been fine. They probably would have taken the game. Or at least had a much easier time pushing in they had dealt as much damage here as they had up in the north. They dealt the damage here, smashed up the army a bit, and then switched over to Thuglaw Ball and then done a final push after breaking Hokomoka's economy. But Hokomoka had so much backup economy in the south and southeast that it didn't matter even when Vistrician broke this. It kind of mattered a bit when they broke this. It was starting to hit a point where, they didn't, where Hokomoko didn't have enough metal or energy to actually build as much as they wanted to. But they very quickly recovered from that because they had this out there. If this had been gone too, then Hokomoka would have been closer to like 10 metal per second rather than 20, 25 metal per second, and it would have been much harder to rebuild. But unfortunately, that was not the case, and Hokomoka had no problem bouncing back. Anyway, that is that. So thank you for watching. That is going to be it for me tonight. So have a good night, everybody.